prenatal development. Prenatal development is like the pre-party for life, because it's the time before a baby is born. It begins when a tiny cell from the mom meets a tiny cell from the dad, kind of like a successful blind date. Together, these tiny cells form a zygote, which is like a super small blob that starts to divide over and over faster than a calculator can do math. Pretty soon, it becomes a bunch of cells traveling down into the mother's womb to look for the perfect parking spot. This bunch of cells keeps growing and changing. At this early stage, it is called an embryo. The embryo is so tiny that it could sit on the tip of your pencil and not pay rent. It grows so fast you would think it's trying to win a growth contest. Tiny bumps appear where arms and legs will be. There are spots that will become eyes and ears. Its tiny heart beats along, playing a tune so quiet you would need super hearing to catch it. All of this happens before the mother can even feel the baby move. After a few weeks, the embryo graduates and gets a new name, fetus. This is when it starts looking more like a real baby and less like a mysterious blob creature. It grows tiny fingers fingers to count, toes to wiggle, and eyelids to wink. Inside the mother's belly, the fetus floats in a comfy fluid bag, kind of like lounging in its own private hot tub. It can even make funny faces, probably practicing for its first family photo. By the end of prenatal development, it is ready to burst onto the scene and show off its new moves. The fetus grows from a tiny dot into something about the size of a watermelon. It's like a secret construction site with lots of hard work going on inside. There are no hammers or saws though, just lots of cells doing their job. The mother's body gives the fetus oxygen, food, and a snug place to live until it is strong enough to meet the world outside. In the end, nature pulls off its best magic trick. A brand new human is built step by step, without fireworks, marching bands, or silly costumes. It is a slow, silent masterpiece, and when the time comes, it makes the grandest entrance of all, infancy. Infancy is like the opening act of a big play called Life, covering the time from birth to about two years old. During this period, babies are like little sponges, soaking up everything around them, even though they do not fully understand it yet. At the very start, they cannot do much besides cry, sleep, and eat, and their crying is a simple but effective way of communicating their needs. As time passes, these tiny learners start picking up new tricks, almost like leveling up in a game. First, they lift their heads, then roll over, sit, crawl, and finally walk, each new ability becoming a sort of badge they earn through practice. Meanwhile, their brains work like supercomputers, processing everything they see, hear, and feel. Babies begin to recognize faces, voices, and objects, as though building a mental database. Alongside these growing mental skills, they start babbling in attempts to form words, trying out sounds like baba and dada. By the end of infancy, many can say a few simple words, showing that their minds are starting to form a mini dictionary. At the same time, their senses are kicking into high gear. They they feel textures, taste flavors, hear countless sounds, and see all sorts of shapes and colors. Every time they experience something new, it is as if their brain asks, what is this sorcery? Their mind starts building connections and learning more about the world. In essence, infancy is a time of rapid growth, big milestones, and endless curiosity about everything around them. Toddlerhood. Imagine being an explorer in a brand new world you know nothing about, yet you are curious enough to learn more. That's what toddlerhood is all about. During this phase, tiny humans boldly go where no crayon has gone before, venturing across living rooms, backyards, and playgrounds. As you spend this time learning to walk, talk, and figure out new things, it's like running a one-kid science experiment. Typically beginning around two years old and wrapping up by age three, toddlerhood is a remarkable period of discovery. One of the first big steps is learning to walk. At first, you might wobble like a penguin on ice, but soon you move faster, climb higher, and even start running. Your new mobility lets you explore every corner of your environment. It's it's as if someone handed a curious scientist an entire lab to investigate. As your feet find their rhythm, your mouth also gets to work. You begin with simple words like mama or dog, and before long, you start piecing words together. It's like collecting puzzle pieces, each one revealing a little more about the world. By the time toddlerhood ends, you're proudly putting together short sentences. Alongside movement and language, your emotions start to bloom. One moment, you're giggling with delight, and the next, you might be crying as if the world is ending. It's like being a tiny storm cloud that changes weather patterns in seconds. Finally, you test rules and boundaries, not to cause trouble, but to understand how things work. It's like gently feeling out the edges of a new playground. Preschool stage. 
Being in the preschool stage of human development is like being a superhero getting your first mission. You're learning to use your powers of talking, thinking, and making friends. This stage happens when you're about three to six years old, and your brain is ready to absorb everything you see, hear, and feel. Your imagination is on fire because you might pretend to be a fireman, a chef, or a dragon. These games teach you to solve problems and figure out how things work. It is like practicing for the real world, but with toys and costumes. You also start asking why a lot. Your mind is like a treasure hunter searching for answers about how the world works. You learn how to count, recognize letters, and understand simple rules. Your brain is growing stronger, just like your muscles when you play. This stage is essentially about learning, growing, and having fun. Everything you do, from drawing a stick figure to saying please, helps you grow into a bigger and stronger person. Think of it like a tutorial for life. Every little task you complete is like leveling up, except instead of earning coins, you're earning brain power, and maybe a cookie if you play your cards right. Middle child Childhood. Middle childhood is like the training wheel stage of life, happening between 6 and 12 years old. You're not a little kid anymore, but you're not a teenager yet. It's when your brain and body are leveling up in cool ways. You learn bigger words, harder math, and how to solve problems better. It's like building a mental toolbox, with each subject adding a new tool. At school you start understanding teamwork. You realize the world doesn't revolve around you, and working with friends feels like solving a giant puzzle together. Physically, your body is growing steadily, your muscles strengthen Lengthen, allowing you to run faster, jump higher, and try new sports. If early childhood was a sandbox, middle childhood is the jungle gym, because it's more exciting, but still safe. Emotions get more complex too. You begin to understand what others feel, not just what you feel. It's like adding more colors to your emotional crayon box. Friendships start to matter more. Sometimes they're great, other times they're tricky, like figuring out the rules of a new game. As you grow more independent, your parents and teachers remain your safety net. You begin making choices and learning what what's right and wrong. Mistakes become practice runs, like learning not to touch a hot stove. Pre-adolescence if there was an in-between stage in human development, it would be pre-adolescence. It is the bridge between being a kid and becoming a teenager. Imagine you are a caterpillar getting ready to turn into a butterfly, but you are still in the cocoon. You're not quite there yet, but big changes are starting. During this time, your body starts preparing for puberty. It is like a construction site inside you, with hormones as the workers. They begin building stronger muscles, taller bones, and new moods. Sometimes you might feel happy, then annoyed then happy again. That is just your body adjusting to the new blueprints. Your brain is also under construction. It's getting faster and smarter, like upgrading from a bicycle to a race car. You start thinking more deeply about things, understanding why people act a certain way, and solving problems more easily. You might care more about what your friends think, like wanting to fit in with the coolest kids at school and sit on the cool table during lunch. You may also notice your interest shifting. Maybe you used to love action figures, but now you prefer building Lego cities or writing stories stories. That is your personality stretching its wings, trying new things, and figuring out what it wants. Puberty. Let's say life is a Super Mario video game, and you stumble upon a mushroom that ramps up your growth. That's basically what puberty is. It's like the body hitting the growth power-up button. It's the stage when you grow into a teen, and your body starts to change so you can one day become an adult. This is all controlled by tiny messengers in the body called hormones, which act like construction managers, telling different parts of the body to grow and develop. Develop. For girls, puberty often begins between ages 8 and 13. It's like a flower blooming, but sometimes feels more like a cactus sprouting. Their hips widen, breasts start to grow, and they may begin their period, which is the body's way of preparing for potential future babies. Hair starts growing under their arms and around their private areas. For boys, puberty usually starts a bit later, between ages 9 and 15. It's like a seed sprouting into a tree. Their shoulders broaden, their muscles grow, and their voices get deeper, often cracking like a guitar guitar string tuning itself. Hair appears under their arms, on their faces, and around their private areas. Both boys and girls experience growth spurts, during which they seem to stretch taller almost overnight, as someone pulls them upward like a garden weed. Skin may get oily, leading to pimples, just the skin adjusting to all the changes. Emotions during puberty can feel like a roller coaster ride at an amusement park. One moment you're laughing, and the next, you might feel upset. This is because hormones don't just change your body, but also impact your feelings. 
like a DJ at a party who keeps switching between heavy metal and sad love songs. Young Adulthood Young adulthood is like being the captain of your own boat, but nobody mentioned the boat might have a few leaks, and the ocean occasionally feels like it's trying out for a disaster movie. This stage starts around your late teens and goes into your 30s. You might start working, learning new skills, or finding your passion. It's like trying out tools to see which work best for your ship. Some tools will help you fix things, while others will have you wondering why you've been carrying around a broken compass for three years. Friendships and relationships change during this time. Some will bring snacks, fix sails, and sing sea shanties with you. Others will just be seasick and try to convince you to turn around at every wave. And that's okay. Not everyone is built for long voyages. You might also choose a partner to sail with you on this adventure, navigating storms and calm waters together. As the captain, you'll learn to make big decisions, like choosing which way to turn your boat. Sometimes you'll pick the wrong direction and hit a storm, but storms make great stories. Every sailor needs a tale about the time their boat nearly sank, only for them to pass it up with duct tape and determination. Late 30s to early 40s. Let's say life is a long road trip. The late 30s to early 40s stage of life is like being somewhere in the middle of that trip, because you know you've been driving for a while, but are still far from your destination. It's the part of the journey where you might glance at the gas gauge and wonder if it's lying. You've got a pretty good idea of where you're going, but there are days when the roads may be slippery, bumpy, or dark. Your body is your car on this trip. It's not yet ready to go to the scrap heap, but it's already got some good miles on it. Maybe the tires need replacing, or the engine needs a tune up, if you don't stop for maintenance, things might break down. The road ahead isn't always smooth. You'll hit bumps or detours, and some roads might not lead where you expected. It's like when the GPS says turn left, and you end up in a cornfield. Some paths are scenic, others feel like endless highways, but you keep moving forward. The passengers in your car are important too. Family and close friends ride with you, sharing the journey. Some people might hop out at earlier stops, while new ones join along the way. You figure out who helps you navigate, and and who just adds noise to the ride, asking, are we there yet? Middle adulthood. Middle adulthood is like a campfire that has been burning for a while. By now, the flames are steady and strong, but you still need to keep adding logs to keep it going. This stage happens between your 40s and mid-60s. It's the age when your calendar fills up with so many doctor's appointments. At this time, you are like the person managing the campfire. You've learned how to balance things, as if you're walking the tightrope of life. You've built skills, cared for your family or work, and figured out what matters most. Your body also changes during this time. It's like an engine that's been running for years, because it still works well but might need extra care. You might notice a few aches or gray hairs. Staying active and avoiding McDonald's is like giving that engine good fuel. This stage of life also makes you think about what you'll leave behind. It could be skills, ideas, or memories that others carry forward. It could be about teaching, helping, or passing down the family's secret sauce recipe. Sometimes the fire of your middle years needs adjusting. You might face challenges like caring for aging parents or handling big changes at work. It's a time when you learn that multitasking isn't juggling everything. Late adulthood. Imagine reading a long book that you enjoyed. Reaching the final chapter of that book is a lot like late adulthood, because you know that the story is nearing its end. It begins around age 65 and goes onward. By now, the body has been through a lot of action, so it moves slower and cracks like Rice Krispies with every movement. Your body becomes like an old machine. It still works, but some parts creak or wear out. Muscles might not be as strong, and bones can feel like fragile glass. The skin may wrinkle like crumpled paper. These changes are normal. Think of it as life's way of reminding you to handle with care. Not only does the body change, but the mind does as well, like a library where some shelves are harder to reach. Memories might take longer to find, but the shelves are packed with knowledge from years of living. Many people feel wiser because they've learned much from their experiences. Along with this wisdom, emotions often become calm, like gentle water that no longer stirs easily. You've seen storms, so little things don't bother you as much. Relationships matter more, and and you might want to spend time with family or pass down your story. It's the perfect time to be the wise elder who tells tales of back in my day while kids roll their eyes. As these changes unfold, work may slow down or end completely. This is like putting down a tool after using it for years. This can give you more time for hobbies, helping others, or enjoying peaceful moments. Elderly years. 
Imagine waking up one day realizing you don't have to go to work, catching up with deadlines, or worrying about that nosy boss always looking over your shoulder. Instead, you enjoy a slower-paced life, sipping tea by the porch and waiting for the daily newspaper. That's what elderly life is about. The body might slow down, but the stories sure don't. Wrinkles appear as badges of honor, evidence of years spent laughing, crying, and squinting at confusing instruction manuals. Hair turns silver or disappears altogether, as if it's trying to retire early. Bones might creak like an old wooden floor, and joints sometimes feel like they've been replaced with rusty hinges. That's just life reminding you it's okay to move a little slower. Mobility aids, like walkers, can become a trusty sidekick. Think of them as a fancy chariot. The mind, while rich with memories, can also get a little playful. Forgetfulness becomes part of the daily routine. Can't find your glasses? They're probably on your head. Can't remember why you walked into a room? Consider it an opportunity to explore your home like it's brand new. Social life evolves too. Grandkids often bring chaos and joy, like tiny tornadoes made of hugs and giggles. Friends gather to reminisce about the good old days, and community centers become hubs of bingo, knitting, and bad dancing. This stage can also come with its challenges, health concerns demand attention, and doctor visits become more frequent than trips to the grocery store. And there's the thought that the Grim Reaper might be hiding in every corner just waiting for you to be ready to kick the bucket. Death. Life is like a race, and you start running when you're born. Every step you take brings you closer to death, which waits at the end of the road. The race can be long or short, but no one escapes the finish line. In the end, it is the ultimate marathon, where eternal rest is the medal waiting for everyone. As you run this race, your body is your tool, helping you move forward. Yet it will wear out in time, much like a flashlight running out of batteries. Its light grows dimmer and dimmer until it finally stops shining. The flashlight remains, but it no longer longer works. When this happens, some experience a peaceful fading, like a candle slowly burning out. For others, it may feel abrupt, like a sudden gust of wind, whispering, lights out. Either way, when the candle's flame is gone, its work is complete, and it can finally rest. After this final rest, your body no longer needs food or air. It returns to the earth, much like placing a puzzle piece back into its box. In this quiet homecoming, your remains help new life flourish in nature's massive recycling project. Death comes for all living things, patiently waiting. It is a natural step along the path of life, like running out of time in a video game. When your turn ends, new players step forward, and the cycle begins once more.